For our final science understanding for 2.2, we're going to look at predicting the change that occurred in a system or whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic given the effect of the change on the equilibrium position of the system. So to predict changes of an equilibrium system, we're going to now reconsider this reaction of N2O4 and NO2. So a sample of N2O4 decomposes to produce NO2 until equilibrium is established. These gases are in a closed system, uh, which would be a thing like a syringe, at a constant temperature. This is a graph showing you the system at equilibrium. And we can see with this purple line that there's been a change that has been induced or a change that's been made. And it's up to us to try and determine what that change is. So we can see initially it's established equilibrium. What we can see at this point is that the concentration of NO2 as well as N2O4 have both increased. Now this can only occur in one circumstance and that's where we will perhaps uh, decreasing the volume that these uh, gases were contained in. Because if we decrease the volume, this is going to increase the concentration of both of our gases at the same time. We can see NO2 is increased by twice the amount of N2O4 and that's given based on the mole ratio here. So we could expect that we've got an increase in pressure and we know an increase in pressure, the system will act to try and decrease the pressure by favoring the side that has fewer moles and in this case it's going to be the reactant side so we can expect that the equilibrium has shifted to the left and so it's favoring the backward reaction and this is going to then result in more of our reactant and less of our product. This image here shows you what we could observe so given that nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas and dinitrogen tetroxide is a colourless gas. Over in part A, we've got a system here at equilibrium. So it has a relatively light brown colour. And we've got a specific concentration of both reactants and products. We can then increase the pressure by pushing in our syringe. So pushing in these gas particles into a smaller volume. So this is our change. But what you can see here is it's actually reverted back into a lighter brown colour. So that would suggest that the concentration of NO2 has actually decreased from part B and the concentration of N2O4 has actually increased. And that's represented by these lighter particles here in part C. For our next example, we're going to consider this reaction. So it's the decomposition of carbon dioxide to form carbon monoxide and oxygen. What we can see in our graph over to the right is that at that time indicated by the dashed line we've noticed an increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide and from that it's actually then resulted in a decrease in the concentration of carbon dioxide but an increase in the concentration of carbon monoxide and oxygen gas. So we can say that equilibrium is going to shift to favour the forward reaction because this is going to help decrease the concentration of CO2 so this will cause that reduction in CO2, but an increase in carbon monoxide and O2. Another example here, we can see the initial change um, at that dashed line was a reduction in the concentration of carbon monoxide. And we can see here that the system is going to try and favour the forward reaction again to try and increase its concentration. So we could say equilibrium is again going to shift into the forward direction that will decrease the concentration of carbon dioxide again and also increase the concentration of our reactants. For our second to last example, we're looking at how we could predict the exothermic or endothermic nature of a reaction. So we're using the same reaction and we're told at a particular time the temperature was decreased what we need to do is understand how this has affected the system at equilibrium and therefore whether the forward uh, reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So if we have a look at this, we've got a decrease in the temperature. This has resulted in an increase in the concentration of CO2, a decrease in the concentration of CO, a decrease in the concentration of O2. 
This would have had to occur because the system is trying to increase the temperature by favoring the exothermic reaction. So because the concentration of our reactant has increased, that would suggest that our backward reaction is going to be our exothermic reaction, and therefore our forward reaction is going to be endothermic. So that would mean this reaction will have a positive delta H value. For our final example, we're going to look at this example, which gives us the value of delta H, and for this reaction that produces sulfur trioxide, the delta H value is negative, so it's an exothermic reaction. On our graph to the right, we can see that a change was made at that dashed line. This has resulted in a reduction in the SO2 concentration, as well as the O2 concentration, but an increase in the concentration of SO3. So at that particular time, it's actually resulted in equilibrium shifting in the forward direction, and this is the exothermic reaction. So having said that, the initial stress must have been the opposite. In other words, it must have been a decrease in the temperature. So equilibrium shifted to the right. It favored the exothermic reaction. So we could predict that the change that was made at that time was that the temperature was decreased. So that concludes the videos for subtopic 2.2. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.